Good morning or afternoon or evening, whatever time of day you are tuning in to watch this worship. Know that you are invited and welcome here. We are the South Sound United Methodist Cooperative, a group of pastors and staff from the United Methodist Churches of Shelton and Steamboat Island and Olympia, Tom Water and Lacey and Rochester and Oakville. And we gather each week to worship our God of love and compassion and healing and grace. And we are honored to have you here joining us today. Please hear these words to open our hearts for this hour. Today in this hour, at this moment, we are in a regular rhythm of letting God work in us. Here we rest from daily work. This is the moment our souls have been waiting for. As we sit and hear God's word, whether preached or sung or prayed or read from scripture, let's remember to ask ourselves, are we listening? God is informing and guiding our time together. This is Sabbath. This is God's time. Let's pause from every unessential mission so that we experience and absorb the news that God is good, Jesus is the way, and the Holy Spirit is ready to renew all who gather in God's name. Welcome to worship. Friends, we are invited to come to the table of grace and receive the gift of God's mercy and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Our Pentecost scripture reading last week told us that we are being saved. Our salvation doesn't come at some end point in time, but it is happening here and now. And we celebrate that at the table that Jesus set for us, where there are elements of bread and juice that remind us that God is with us. And so after this worship at 11 a.m., I invite you to join me at that table to receive the finest bread that nourishes us body and soul and to receive the cup that reminds us that Jesus loves us completely and that we are called to love the world completely. There are Zoom links available on the Fum Coley website. Uh, and so I invite you to click on that link and come to Zoom communion. All you need in the United Methodist Church to receive communion is a desire to come to the table, to receive the grace, and to share it to the world. Join me. Thank you. Please join me in this prayer of confession. God, we confess that we are an impatient and selfish people. When you offer us the promise of a new future, we complain that you don't get there fast enough. When you provide for our needs, we complain that it isn't enough. And when you, our bad attitudes and negative outlooks cause us to stumble, we blame you. Holy God, please forgive us our hurtful ways. Teach us to be patient. Instruct us to be grateful. Guide us to be responsible and humble. As we turn ourselves around and look to your son, let us experience your grace and your gift of new life. In the name of Christ, our savior, we pray, amen. Now hear this good news. Listen to these words of assurance. God's love resides with you this very day. Along with that love lies holy grace and forgiveness. Rejoice for in our brokenness, we are loved by our creator. Through the teachings of Christ, we are led along the paths of righteousness, and through Christ's resurrection, we find new life. You, my friends, are beloved children of God. Our scripture reading this morning comes from John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Now hear this reading. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? 
Can one enter a second time into the mother's room and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astounded that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Not, now Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him. Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, can, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into the heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Good morning, South Sound Co-op. Why am I in my shower right now? Well, it has to do with our scripture passage today. How many of you like taking a shower or a bath? People have take baths and showers for lots of different reasons. Sometimes it's to get clean. Sometimes it's to feel it's part of a morning routine to start your day. Sometimes it's to unwind after a really long day. Well, in Jesus' time, one of the other reasons that people would take a bath, uh, they would go to a very special place and they would use a giant big bathtub called a mikvah and they would take baths as part of an apology to God because sometimes we forget who we are, right? We forget that we are beloved children of God and when we forget that, we sometimes do things that hurt other people or that hurt ourselves. And so in the Judaism that Jesus grew up with in the first century of Israel, what they would do is take these baths as a sign and a symbol of the way that they wanted to recommit themselves to God. Or it was another way of saying, God, I'm really sorry that I forgot who I was. By taking this bath, I'm going to remember. And when I remember that I'm a beloved child of God, then I can make good and loving choices the way that you're asking me to. And if I forget again, well, I can do this ritual as often as I need to, to keep working on being the person that you are calling me to be. So in when Jesus and Nicodemus are having this conversation about the difference between being born like when we're babies instead of being born of water and spirit, what Jesus is saying is that even though you can only be born as a baby one time, you can be reborn or you can recommit to loving God and to remembering who you are as often as you need to. And it's an important thing for us to remember who we are and who God is calling us to be. So that is my hope for you today, is that the next time that you're in your bathtub or your shower, that you will take a moment for yourself and say, I am a beloved child of God, making good and loving choices, making kind choices in how I treat myself and how I treat other people matter. And if I ever forget, because we all do, if I ever forget, I can always do, I can always ask to be born of water in the spirit again, and God will hear that, and God will keep encouraging me to grow into the best possible person that I can be. So let's pray about that. Dear Jesus, thank you for baths. Thank you for all the opportunities to remember that we are beloved children of God. Whenever we forget, help us to remember that we are always born of the water and born of the spirit. And so we can always try again to be kinder and more loving people tomorrow. Amen.
People often seek relationship with the church community to achieve a sense of grounding and purpose. There's a desire to find a safe place to spend time with God and well to be good humans. It's a noble and a laudable purpose, very much like the place that the Pharisee Nicodemus found himself in. Nicodemus was, after all, an ancient times preacher, a religious leader who knew his scripture and his theology and all the practices and rules for conducting appropriate worship and associated lives. And yet, he saw something in the engaging teacher, preacher, healer, prophet Jesus that left him wanting more. Even though Nicodemus was immersed in the trappings of his faith community and charged with conducting it all religiously, he saw something in the countercultural Jesus that was missing in his own life. He saw God in a fresh and a new way. And it must have been unsettling as well as a source of inspiration and possibility. Now, Nicodemus seeks Jesus out at night and under cover and away from people. He's not ready to do so publicly. He's kind of like people, you know, like you and me, who can talk about hard topics and how they really feel about them with people they trust, but maybe aren't ready to go public with just yet. You know, to be vulnerable a while in a safe place where you're sorting things out and finding your way apart from the noise of the crowd. So Nicodemus meets up with Jesus, acknowledging he sees God in Jesus, but he wants to know more. And that's when Jesus tells him this. He says he needs to be born from above. Now this is a, a puzzling moment for Nicodemus, who as a bona fide holy man is a legitimate steward of the scripture and faith practices. What are you talking about, Jesus? Not to worry, Jesus says, Think of it as the wind blowing where it pleases. Being born from above is being vulnerable to receiving new light through the breath, through the spirit of God. Like the wind, it, it catches you and it moves you and it transforms you and it transports you. And you are born from above by the spirit. Now for Nicodemus, caught up in the ritual and rules of his life, in the religious community, these words from Jesus must have seemed chaotic and requiring for him a change in mindset that would move him from the predictable to embracing the unknown, making him vulnerable to the uncertainties of what God would bring him, as well as the potential judgment of his colleagues and friends if he started talking in these strange ways. Now, the New Testament will follow Nicodemus as he moves from his first meeting with Jesus in the darkness to his later public testimony on his behalf. And eventually, Nicodemus will be there for Jesus at the end as he steps forward to anoint him at his death. He is a disciple. He has become a disciple. Nicodemus is a disciple who first began by seeking Jesus and learning what it means to follow him. Jesus, well, his encounter with Nicodemus and his outreach to so many people, his attraction that he had for people, as he describes the freeing and soaring possibility of being changed, not through our own actions, 
our judgment, our maybe limited viewpoint, but to begin to see life in terms of possibilities rather than limitations. So let's be honest. At times in the past year or so, we have felt a sense of hopelessness on sometimes a very large scale. We've tried to be faithful to ministry and worship as best we could. And many of us have worried that we were failing to meet expectations as we sought to keep ourselves and other people safe and to live the gospel with new ways to worship online and outside. And looking back, I know, I know, I'm confident that Jesus was with us in the form of the Holy Spirit. He sat in the darkness with us. He's been with us every step of the way. And, and like Nicodemus, we continued to seek Jesus and new understandings of how to be followers and ultimately how to be the church. This past Pentecost, a day of the Holy Spirit, well, it marked the end of outdoor worship for the two churches I serve at Oakville and at Rochester. We moved back inside and back into the sanctuary in June. And since last September, we have gathered steadfastly or perhaps stubbornly outdoors and most alternating Sundays. Pentecost Sunday this past week in Rochester was a small gathering. We braved the elements one last time, at least for the time being, to worship outside. We came to hear the New Testament teachings of the morning when the people gathered and the Holy Spirit showed up. The Spirit moved through the room with tongues of fire heating things up, so much so that division melted and everyone could hear one message. This moment marked the birth of the church as more than 100 people were born from above, transformed on the same page, one with God and one with one another. As the wind increased and moved through our little gathering in Rochester on our own Pentecost Sunday, I struggled to hold down the pages of my sermon. The wind blew my hair about wildly and covered my eyes and the roar rustled through my microphone and the sound system. It was, it was nearly impossible to, to think or hear or feel much of anything else but that wind steadily moving across the front grounds of the church, pushing the clouds above us at a breakneck pace. It blew bulletins and stray Kleenex about, and it kicked up the sawdust on the grounds of the pool yard across the way. But on, on some level, some chaotic and mysterious way, all of this, the unceasing wind on Pentecost Sunday, the unpredictable past season of outdoor worship and indoor worship and all kinds of ways to worship a pandemic challenge all remind me of what Jesus told Nicodemus. When we seek Jesus, we must be prepared for the unexpected. As followers of Christ, we can expect to be surprised and to be caught up by the Holy Spirit that blows about us in ways and places that will challenge us if we are willing, if our spirits are willing to follow. It's when we have it all under control and all figured out that everything happening happens according to our own individual comfort level. Well, it's in those moments that the breath of God comes and the Spirit moves. And we can embrace it, or we can endeavor to only tend to the ways that we want, the ways that make us comfortable. Now, Nicodemus 
would tell you that worked for him for a while. But eventually, he found himself slipping away in the darkness to meet this Jesus and ultimately finding new life because of him. So whether we are outdoors, indoors, or online, or offline, wherever we are, the spirit is moving. And, and new life awaits us. It awaits our churches, our families, and our communities, all of us, if we are open, if we are open to seeing not what we want to or what we are accustomed to, but what God wants to give us. May you be aware of the Spirit in your lives. May we all. Glory be to God. Amen. Will you pray with me after hearing just a brief word of scripture? Just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from or where it is going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. Let's pray. Holy Spirit of God, invisible like the wind, we do not see you moving among us, but we see the effect. Come to our hearts that we may be renewed and reborn. Open our minds that we may perceive your kingdom. Open our hearts that we may share them with you. We pray for your church, formed through wind and flame. Let your spirit come, O God, upon those gathered in your name. May your spirit move and receive our prayer. We pr pray for our nation and its leaders, for all the nations of the world. We pray for the equitable distribution of goods so that all people might know abundance. May your spirit move and receive our prayer. To you, O oh God, we lift your creation. We offer praise and thanksgiving for the wonders that surround us, the signs that point to you. Guide us to steward well these gifts you have entrusted into our hands. May your spirit move and receive our prayer. Holy One, we pray for those who are sick and suffering. Ease their pain, still their illness, hold them in your peace. May your spirit move and receive our prayer. As we pray for people around the world, so too we pray for those near to us, for our communities, our families, those whom we love. Bless them and keep them in your light and love. May your spirit move and receive our prayer. Lift up our eyes to where the cross of Christ stands for our healing so we may believe, and in believing not die, but have eternal life, through him who in your love for us, you sent into the world, Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Friends, we heard in the scripture today, one example of how important it is to have someone else to talk with when we have questions about the spirit. The spiritual leader in our story today got to talk with Jesus himself. But Jesus is present still with us when we are gathered in his name and gathered in community of people seeking to know God and love God and love one another. And this is part of what your offerings give and make possible in each community. We are here as church, as clergy, as staff, in our buildings, so that there is a clear place to go and some people to talk to when we have 
questions on our hearts when we are struggling to know God and that, and when we are working to find a way to be closer to God. So thank you for your generous offerings. Many of you are starting to worship in person and you can always give your offerings directly during worship in person, or you can mail them to your local church. If you're more comfortable online, please take advantage of one of the giving portals, uh, either through your local church website or through the Olympia First website. Offerings there can be noted and they will go to the church of your choice. Let's give in gratitude for the Christian community.
Please join me in a prayer of dedication for the offerings given. Holy One, we are always seeking to know you. Your spirit calls out to our hearts and all those who long to be born in the spirit. Thank you for being present in our communities so that we can work out together the way to follow you. Bless these offerings, multiply them to your use, and guide our decisions so that your will is done. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, we have some announcements. First of all, we hope and wish for each of you a safe and happy and restful Memorial Day weekend. And then looking forward to June 6th, next Sunday, um, Shelton United Methodist Church will have indoor worship starting at 10 a.m. Also, Oakville United Methodist Church will start indoor worship again at 11 a.m. Um, Lacey St. Andrews United Methodist Church is continuing to hold parking lot worship at noon um, on June 6th from 1 to 3 p.m. The First Olympia United Methodist Church will hold a drive-by graduation celebration for six of their high school graduates. And finally, Tamar United Methodist Church will begin holding outdoor worship on the second and fourth Sundays in June, July, and August. Now, hear these words of benediction. Sisters and brothers of Christ, go into all the world. Go forth with forgiveness and grace. Go forth with compassion and love. And go as Christ's family for all the world to see. Go in peace. Amen. You're my rock of refuge, the shelter of my life. My merciful companion, my comfort in the night. Though my heart falls hard, still your love stands guard. Oh Lord, you are my rock of refuge. And I run to you, and you hold me close. You hide me under your shadows. Yes, I run to you. It's so Calm within my storm, a secret place of safety, my barrier from harm. When my eyes are tears, through my worst of fears, oh Lord, you are my rock.
Yes, I run to you. It's so good to know. Oh, Lord, you are my rock of refuge. Yes, I run to you. It's so good to know. Oh, Lord, you are my rock of refuge. Oh, Lord, you are my rock of refuge. Oh, Lord, you are my rock of refuge.